Now we're going to use these cane poles. This is what what I grew up fishing with, with a with a floater. Well, friends, it has been cooking. Our sourdough bread has been cooking for 31 minutes. Let's take the lid off this thing gingerly. There are more than 3,000 species of cicadas found in and around the world. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Well, friends, welcome to this week's A Sportsman's Life. I'm out here at Cedar Creek Lake with my good longtime buddy, Jason Barber. Now, you fished out here all your life, haven't you, buddy? Yeah, it's been almost 50 years of it. So. Yeah, it's hard to believe. I still think of this rascal as being like 30, but there again, I'm 70 plus, <laughs> so, you know, time marches on. But we've had a lot of fun, Jason and I, through the years fishing together. His big boat, which you saw a picture of, is sitting over there. We're going to use these cane poles. This is what what I grew up fishing with, with a with a floater and a treble hook. That's the number six treble number, on there. Number six. So what's our goal? Our goal is to show people that, yeah, come get in the boat with Jason. Come and go fishing with him. Yeah, but, but you don't it, have to have the latest and greatest. Uh, technology and big boats and fancy stuff you know you can go cut you a cane pole off a, a permissionable spot oh yeah we found this on the side of the road where it's yep. coming into the ditch but uh trimmed them up rigged them up ourselves. luke's got a couple different brands of punch bait here i think there's yeah. probably 10 20 brands of this oh there's all there. anything with a good cheese bait a base and uh that'll stay on your hook this is stick it by magic bait it's a great bait Uncle Joe's cheese bait. We're going to use both of them. They'll work, and any of them will work, but if you get one to stay on the hook, the longer the better, right? Yeah. That's it, and uh, we're going to actually be fishing within about 50 yards of here. I never will forget doing a magazine article with you, and we were talking about catching, uh, it was a blue catfish winter time. Mm -hmm. We pulled up, oh, it was several miles from here on a wooded point, and threw out and immediately hooked like a, I don't know, I've still got the picture, 50 was, or 60 pounds, yeah, it was a big, big one. Fish. <laughs> well, let's, let's get put this punch bait in the in the water, see if we can get us a catfish or two. Oh, so, Jason, get yours, buddy. Hey, these little rascals, don't tell me they won't fry up nice. Skin, these what I call skinners. Let's yeah. hold them over here. Now, these won't break any records. But you talk about pulling pull the skins off of these folks, and you have something. My favorite eating. You can't beat it. You cannot beat them. I always like to break the barbs on these things because they will stick you. I use a little pair of pliers and just break the tips off. That was easy. Yeah, that took all of about three minutes, folks. You might can tell. Jason and I are a little bit preoccupied right now. Always have some good pliers with you, though. And a rag. There, and a rag. So we've got a few in the, in the bucket now. I think we're going to get some more, too, don't you? I hope so. <laughs> Jason, what happened there, buddy? You, dropped that you, thing to the bottom, and I got... Whoa! Up. Now that's going to be a little bit bigger. Yeah! Very nice. As I always say, hold him up here. <laughs> now tell me that a little shadow cat, cat won't eat. You betcha. About a pounder a little better. Yeah. All right. I'll grab my rod and get back after him. Close to 30 fish there probably. We yeah. fished an hour. One hour with the proverbial cane poles, yeah, right? All with a stick and a string. Now granted, these are not going to win any state records, but people that have not eaten channel catfish this size, these are some pretty fish. They're not big fish, but they're the ones, kind of like when I hog hunt, I like to shoot those 40, 50 pound hogs, Jason. Yeah, same with these. They got a small fillet to them. When you do them right though, it's a good little fillet. When you fry that thing up, man, it curls up crispy. Just dip your ketchup or your tartar sauce with it. It's, it's hard to beat. It really is. Folks, my buddy Jason Barber knows fish. and He knows about me. We've had several uh, bank fishing trips. I may have ate one or two. I, well, I like them too. You know that. 
Cedar Creek Lake, friends, is about 45 minutes, an hour east of Dallas, southeast of Dallas. Yes. And Jason, talk, tell them about your guide service people that might want to come into Dallas and want to catch a bunch of these and then the big the big blues, you know. Yeah, we're a multi-species guide service, Kings Creek Adventures. Uh, we've been operating for 20 years, so uh, lived here for just almost 50, 49 years uh, right here. So uh, to say we've got a little experience is an understatement, but we do crappie, white bass, hybrid, uh, trophy blue cat, eating blue cat, channel cat, just kind of whatever you want to do. Um, but you can find me on the web at kingscreekadventures.com, on Facebook at uh, Kings Creek Adventures, and you can always get me on my cell, 903-603-2047. Awesome, awesome. Well, I guess it's time to get some of these little fillets removed from these channel catfish. I had a great time with you, Jason. It was sure good to see yeah, you again, buddy. I enjoyed buddy. it, too. I did. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. Well friends, it is your old buddy Luke Clayton and it's time for us to do a little Dutch kettle cooking here. We're gonna make some sourdough bread, friends, but not conventionally. Now. I used to keep a sourdough starter going, you have to feed it, it's actually an organism if you will. But that's a lot of work. You can make really tasty sourdough bread in a matter of overnight. You need to, uh, I use yeast, kick it off with some yeast. I'll show you how to do it in a bowl here. Flour, yeast, sugar, salt, uh, water, it's pretty simple. But the, the key to making that sourdough flavor is letting that uh, dough set for a period of time. This dough is going to set for about 15 minutes. So uh, let me get the bowl out and mix it up. But first, I'll show you uh, how to do the how I do the uh, the Dutch kettle. There's a little trick that makes making bread a lot easier in a Dutch kettle. So let me show you that for starters, folks. Here's a little trick that I learned a long time ago with Dutch kettle cooking. Rather than make make the bread and put that dough right in the bottom of my old Dutch kettle. I put a heavy foil, aluminum, uh, actually it's an old aluminum pan that I bent down. Put that on the bottom, in the bottom of your Dutch kettle, your Dutch oven there, and then you set the, the bread in another pan on top of that. That keeps it from scorching on the bottom. Handy trick. Friends, sourdough starter is really, really easy and exact quantities are not really necessary in my opinion. We're going to make some uh, Dutch kettle sourdough bread tomorrow, but I'm going to make this uh, sourdough starter and let it go overnight. Now in this bowl, I have about four cups, three and a half cups of flour, two tablespoons of active yeast, and about uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. Now I didn't measure any of this. You don't really have to. Bubbles are already starting. That yeast is already beginning to work. You can see that. But we're going to put a put a cloth over this and let it go overnight 12 14 hours temperature is about 75 degrees out here where I'm at and this will become sourdough starter we're going to mix a little more flour with it tomorrow get our Dutch kettle all heated up and ready and we're going to cook it over the campfire so I'm going to give you a look at this in about three or four hours when this yeast really starts working you can do this yourself and and don't you know, don't get tricked up thinking you've got to have exact quantities of everything. About three cups of flour, four cups is okay for the starter. Uh, two ta tablespoons of, of active yeast, dry yeast there, and some sugar, you know, and it's going to it's gonna start working. Look at these little, this has been mixed for maybe two minutes. And friends, here's an idea of the consistency. You want this really thick, pretty stiff. But we'll grease our Dutch kettle next, put some cooking oil on it. And the whole key is not to get too much heat underneath the Dutch kettle. We want most of that heat to be on top and just a few hardwood embers or charcoal, whatever you're using, around the outside perimeter at the bottom of the Dutch kettle. So. So friends, here is our dough after about 15 hours. 
I'm going to pull in tight on this and you can see where it's been working, where the gases has escaped. This has the smell of sourdough. It's not really real sourdough bread, it's, but it tastes just like sourdough. I use yeast in it instead of a starter, instead of a uh, sourdough starter. But we're going to put this in the cast iron skillet and you're going to have a, a, a dough that's really, it's got all the flavors of sourdough but it's not the real deal but it's at a camp it's so easy to make we just put this in a dutch kettle and about 30 minutes we're going to check it see all those little pockets in the dough though and if you could smell this it smells exactly like sourdough bread so let's put it in the old dutch kettle let her go for about 30 minutes okay friends it is time to put our top to our dutch oven I have the dough in the pan, and as I showed you, I have that pan elevated off the bottom uh, by some uh, actually an aluminum pan there. That keeps it from scorching on the bottom. So there, we've got our got our lid on, and we're going to put most of the heat from the top. So let's start putting some coals on this thing. We want it to bake mostly from the top down because that is one thing you have to watch is scorching bread and had I put this dough on the bottom of this pot it's a good chance we would scorch it and it would have a the bottom of it would be burnt or scorched but this is some good coals we want to put them around this thing on the top most of them from the top down that's where we want our heat to come from we'll put a few on the bottom just around the perimeter of the bottom of it but we want this to cook from the top down and it's going to take about 30 or 35 minutes so let's put a few let's put a few coals down here at the bottom just to give you an idea rather than poke them way up under there just put a few right along the edge I'm not going to put many maybe I don't know seven or eight and then friends we're gonna we're gonna start give it the sniff test <laughs> this sourdough bread smells so good when it's cooking and that should start taking place here really quick but the dough if you could have smelled it before we started cooking it it smelled like sourdough uh, that's from leaving it have it working for about 15 hours so I'll kick back and relax a little bit here and let's let the old Dutch oven do its job, folks. Well, friends, it has been cooking. Our sourdough bread has been cooking for 31 minutes. Let's take the lid off this thing gingerly. Ooh, look out. I, can, I wish you could smell that sourdough, friends. Mm-mm-mm. Let's let it cool a little bit. And let's put some butter on this and devour a piece or two what do you say so folks here is exactly what sourdough bread is all about some hot butter or actually some cold butter put on there and melted i've eaten one of these already sourdough bread doesn't have to be the hard job you might think it is making it granted the uh, starter if you want to go that route that's that's the original official way to do sourdough bread but you can get it going with a little yeast and about 15 hours in a warm area and bake it and it is oh so good. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American Built, American Strong. The Wyo Steakhouse, Catch and Release Apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters. Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns and Vineyard Max Deer Products. Hello sports fans, this is Bill Carey, the old man at Striper Express, with your fishing tip this week on A Sportsman's Life. You know what this is, don't you? This is a dip net. Did you notice it's made of rubber? This is the only way to go. When you're jig fishing, you only got one hook. 
but a lure has two trebles and this is the only way they come out faster. You hang it up in a nylon net, we've all been there. During top water action, everything's crazy. Now, how do you use it? You don't chase that fish. You tell that person, hold your rod up, hold your rod up. And then like a shovel, you just slice that water up and over. That's how you do it. Down, right in front of the fish, head first. Always head first. It'll jump out of the net. Like a shovel, just slice that water and bring that fish up. There is your tip this week. Rubber nets, like a shovel, slice that water, head first. So, there's your fishing tip this week on A Sportsman's Life. Go catch a fish. There are more than 3,000 species of cicadas found in and around the world. Cicadas produce an exceptionally loud buzzing sound using the membranes in their abdomen. They typically live in trees feeding on watery tree sap and will lay their eggs in a split in the tree bark. Most cicadas are active during the day as adults with little activity after dusk. Cicadas here in my home state of Texas, or annual cicadas, are species that emerge annually. The cicada's life cycle can vary from one to nine years as an underground nymph. Once they have emerged above ground, both the male and the female cicada will die within a few weeks. Male cicadas will send their courtship calls from the many variety of trees found in and around the area. After mating, the female will deposit her eggs in a split in the tree. Cicadas will consume some plant liquids for nutrition, but will eat very little as they have a lifespan of less than two months. When the eggs hatch, the newly hatched nymphs drop to the ground and burrow. Cicadas live underground as nymphs for most of their lives, at depths of almost eight feet. Nymphs have strong front legs for digging and will construct a tunnel to surface when they are ready to emerge. Once they emerge, the nymphs will molt or shed their skin, as you see here on my shirt. The abandoned exoskeleton remains clean to my shirt the following morning. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.